Racing on Tuesday takes place out at Hollywood Bets Killingworth, Tuesday the 26th of March 2024. Eight races to look forward to and race number one gets underway at 12.40 over the 1,000 metre trip. It is a maiden juvenile plate for fillies that will get the day started. It is a start off the bipod as well, so you need to get those bipod bets on by 12.40 on the Tuesday afternoon. Joining me on the line is Graham Hawkins and uh, Graham, how are you doing? No, all good, thank you. Uh, looking forward to this card. It's not an easy card. A uh, number of handicaps and open maidens. You know the usual midweek fair at Hollywood Bits Kenilworth. Uh, but when the card is... The field's not that big, but they're quite tricky. Well, let's get into it. Race number one on the program. We've got a warm order favourite in the form of number six, Tanner Run from the Candace Bass Robinson Yard. Aldo Demea takes her eye. Two-year-old daughter of Var. She's been uh, priced up at six to ten in the market. She ran a cracking race on debut behind Sahara Cat. She uh, met uh, winners on that occasion, and um, with that run under the belt, she no doubt sets a standard and looks to be a horse that could take some beating. Yeah, this looks to be uh, far and away the best bet on the card. Number six, Tanneron, as you said, gave Sahara Cat, who was at very restricted odds that afternoon, uh, a real fright and a real go all the way to the line. And there was only a nose in it, and the rest were spread eagles behind. So it's impossible to look beyond number six, Tanneron, a clear and obvious uh, bipod banker. A uh, number of others worth a mention, a couple of first-timers, very well-bred first-timers, including B. Mary Elizabeth Grace and Artiste. Artiste from the Brett Crawford stable is out of the former Vodacom Durban July winner, Dancer's Daughter, which may suggest that number four Artiste will find a thousand metres on, on the sharp side. Number seven, Wiz. I know it's a long way back to when she ran first time out. Well, we put the word ran in inverted commas uh, because she dislodged her jockey at the start of that day. There was a bit of talk about her to win that first uh, juvenile race of the season, but obviously we didn't get to see her perform with, uh, with no jockey in the saddle. Uh, but she's been given a long time off. She races now with the earmuffs and is one to consider for your trifectas, exactors and quartets. But the obvious second choice in the race is number 10, Duchess of Paloma. Good debut behind all he's been, and then was tested in that little ballerina race on Met Day. That was a very strong form line. Four direct winners have come out of that form line. So the clear second choice and the obvious exactor in the opening race is number six, Tanneron, to win, with number 10, Duchess of Paloma, to run second. But from a bipod perspective, I think we could safely bank at number six, Tanneron, who, as I said, is definitely the nap of the day. Tanneron should take a pile of beating in race number one. Moving along to race number two, an open maiden over 1,400 metres. Fixed odds betting market has got Moon Acres at the top at 14 to 10. It's 2 to 1 about number four, Aladdin's Lamp. Tom's Dine is at 5 to 1. Red Rackham, 8 to 1 into 7 to 1. And then it's 12 to 1. And better by all those. Now, uh, Moon Acres, uh, he ran a fair race last time out. Uh, finishing third behind Kalpsa Klopsa, not beaten far. That was in an open maiden as well. He uh, faces a, a similar type of uh, field as he did last time out. And when having a look at uh, at the balance here, obviously Aladdin's lamp is open to improvement as uh, he was uh, finishing off his race quite nicely last time out, beaten three lengths. And when you judge him on his debut run in that field of 20 runners, he finished 13. But that form line has, uh, has stood up quite nicely. And then you've got um, this was... Uh, Tom's Diner, who uh, could certainly um, run a nice race because on his penultimate start, he wasn't too far off them and he could certainly get involved. But uh, what's your thoughts on uh, race number two? Are you a fan of Moon Acres? He is my first choice, Rahil, uh, but I wouldn't be rushing to take the 14 to 10. I think it's a little bit more competitive than the betting would suggest. You've mentioned Aladdin's Lamp and Tom's Diner. Now, back in January, Moon Acres beat Tom's Diner, but only by a head or so, over 1,200 metres when they ran behind Dancing to the Light. And then behind Carps and Klopser on the 5th of March, Moon Acres finished ahead of Aladdin's Lamp. As you say, Aladdin's Lamp was only having his second start and was finishing off the race really well. So Aladdin's Lamp can certainly turn the form around with number three moon acres that would be no surprise uh, they go 1400 meters on this occasion uh, moon acres for the first time aladdin's lamp for the first time thomas diner did go over 1600 meters last time when fifth behind blue bay and uh, only came up for air in the closing stages and at six to one he's quite attractively priced his number eight thomas diner when you consider there was only a net between him and moon acres behind dancing to the light over 1200 meters so I do think the race 
is a little more competitive than the betting would suggest. I don't think there's any value for number three, Moon Acres, but Justin Snaith drew a rare blank over the weekend at Hollywood Bets Kenilworth. You'll be keen to get on the board. So number three, Moon Acres, is the top choice. But I'm going with all of three Moon Acres, four Aladdin's Lamp, and eight Tom's Diner in the bipod because I think the winner could come from any one of those three. You mentioned a nibble for number six, Red Rackham. It was interesting that he started his uh, career over 1,600 metres. He has shown improved pace in his last two starts. Steps back from 1,800 metres of his last run, when as a maiden he raced against winners. He steps back to 1,400 metres. Uh, he could certainly be a factor. And then, of course, there's this very well-bred first timer, number seven, Silver Idol. Uh, I remember him as a yearling. He's the type of horse I think that's going to need ground. There doesn't appear to be any market support or any market interest in him. He gets a tongue-tie fitted first time out, which is rather unusual. So perhaps will sit on the fence with number seven silver idol so yes i'm going with number three moon acres uh, to beat home number four aladdin's lamp and number eight tom's diner but i don't think there'll be too much to choose between the three yeah it's a race where i think in terms of the bipod and place accumulator you could certainly go with two if not three runners here and you should be uh, good enough you should be safe if you go three well I think uh, you should certainly double up, at least in the bar pot. Uh, moving along to uh, race number three, 1,200 meters the distance. It's an open maiden. 13.50 is the off time. And your favorite is Maneki Neko, along with number six, Connery. Both are 22 to 10. Three to one about explosive speed. Lead to glory, seven to one into five to one. And then it is 10 to one and better bar those. Now, Maneki Neko is a runner that... Uh, He's starting to come to hand quite nicely and uh, last time out in the work riders here and second behind Prankster. And then you've got Connery who's been a, a bit disappointing, been a bit costly to follow on, uh, on the odd occasion. But uh, he's got some fair form to his name and he could certainly run a nice race. But this horse that keeps me interested is number two, King's Boy, because he's a well-bred son of uh, Kingman. And I know that 1200 possibly is going to be sharp for him and he's probably looking for to go around the turn. But... I think that he could make significant improvement on his debut performance in that uh, hot maiden on uh, on Met Day. He's certainly an interesting runner, is number two, King's Boy. As you say, he's uh, beautifully bred. as an imported horse by King Man. Showed nothing on debut. The betting suggested they weren't expecting very much. And again, the market will be the best guide because he hasn't raced since uh, his debut on Met Day. So if he's improved in the interim, I would imagine uh, that there'd be a little bit of market support for him because this is not a deep field. Of course, being an open maiden, he's got 61 to carry second time out giving away quite a lot of weight to some of these horses uh, so the betting will be the best guide for the moment as far as the bipod is concerned i haven't included him uh, but if there is money for him of course then uh, i will add him to the list uh, but my top choice is the horse you first mentioned number six connery you can't uh, i would say is a tentative first choice because as you say he's well exposed he's had 10 starts uh, but this is not a deep field and his last two runs have been probably very the most encouraging for a long time two runs back he ran under a length behind dancing to the light now that form line comes under scrutiny in the previous race uh, where moon acres and tom's diner run so if either of those two will win i'm not suggesting that would uh, seriously enhance the chances of number six connery but at least the form will have been frank to a degree so number six connery was running on best of the others from off the pace behind star performer who won by quite a margin last time out but connery's done enough to suggest he can win a race of this nature and he's getting just a little bit of weight uh, from a necky necko also on the improve, uh, but as you say, that form line behind Prankster may not turn out to be that strong. Explosive speed, uh, also behind Prankster, so safely held, one would imagine, by Maneki Neko. Uh, but his next run behind Carps at Clubs, it wasn't a bad effort, and that form line also comes under scrutiny a little bit earlier. One other worth of mention is number five, Lead to Glory. Now, uh, Lead to Glory was placed in a very moderate maiden behind Lady Loxton, and we saw that Ellerix, who finished second in that race, uh, about about a length or so in front of Lead to Glory, didn't flatter the form at all and was very disappointing over the weekend. But nonetheless, with only 51 and a half on her back and uh, pretty lightly raced, you've got to believe that number five, Lead to Glory, could have a say in the outcome. But I'm going with number six, Connery, to beat her, number eight, Maneki Neko, and number nine, Explosive Speed, uh, with number 
five and two, my next two choices. But if there's money for King's Boy, if there's money for King's Boy, he certainly doesn't have to be too good to blow this field away. Six, eight, and nine, the numbers here for Graham in race number three. But definitely number two, King's Boy, he's one to keep an eye on at 10 to one in the market. And as you heard from Graham, if there is support, well, then he's definitely a horse that we need to take seriously. Moving along to race number four, this is a class four contest over the 1600 meter trip for fillies and mares. 25 past two is the off time. It is a start of jackpot one, and your favorite is number nine, Philosophize, at 22 to 10. Enchanting Choice at five to two. Hampstead Heat, recent maiden winner, is at four to one. Red Moon Rising is at five to one, and then it's seven to one. And better bar those. Now, this uh, horse from the Candace Bass Robinson Yard Philosophize ran a very nice race last time out behind uh, Kawe Kazi, who uh, won straight out the maidens, and she's track and she's course and distance suited so she looks to be a horse that um, could certainly run a nice race but this horse red moon rising uh, she's a, she's not the easiest horse to catch but she does look to be a runner that can pop up and now she goes over 1600 meters a distance which she has tried before behind philosophize although on that occasion she had a 12 11 out of 12 draw never really got into contention and off this mark of 77, I thought that she could uh, she could be a bit of value in this contest, Graham. She's definitely a runner. Uh, three runs back, a close-up fourth behind school policy and followed that up with a third behind were good. And then she completely uh, uh, lost the plot over 1,200 metres down the straight behind Pineapple Mint Green. Uh, but uh, going back around the turn from a handy draw of three, you've got to believe that number three, Red Moon Rising, is a potential winner. I haven't included her in the bipod, but I would certainly include her in the jackpot and the pick six. So she is, in fact, my fourth choice. I've gone with my top three choices in the bipod. I have gone with number nine, Philosophize. I think uh, of all the riders that she's had, Elder Domeo gets the best tune out of this daughter of the United States. He's ridden her six times for two wins, two-thirds and a fourth, so five out of six into the money. She's certainly no good thing, but I think the betting is a useful guide. I think they've got it just about right with Philosophize and uh, number seven, Enchanting Choice, uh, the top two in the market. Enchanting Choice was well beaten by Lorena. Uh, that form comes under scrutiny a little bit later on with Dream Searcher running also on this card. Um, Enchanting Choices, I think, uh, should be there and thereabouts. She's, she is consistent, uh, but she's certainly no good good thing. I think number four, Hampstead Heath is heading in the right direction. Beat Plum Pudding when winning a maiden and Plum Pudding came out to win fluently over the weekend. And I do think there's a bit of upside about number four, Hampstead Heath. So I've gone with four, Hampstead Heath, seven, Enchanting Choice and nine, Philosophize uh, in the bipod. If you wish to add number three, Red Moon Rising is my fourth choice. I certainly wouldn't put you off that. And I think you do need to include all four of those in the jackpot and the pick six permutations. It's quite an open event, it's quite evenly matched, uh, but I'm expecting Philosophize, despite the poor draw, uh, to perhaps get the better of arrivals here, but no good thing. Will it be the four-year-old to come out trumps, or will it be the, the uh, three three-year-olds that could certainly dominate race number four? Race number five, Cape Sea Stakes over 1,600 meters, and uh, this event jumps at three o'clock, the start of jackpot two. Favorite is number seven, Dream Searcher, at 28 to 10, it is then 33 to 10 about La Legionnaire, 4 to 1, Majestic Warrior, 5 to 1, Aberdeen, and then it's 6 to 1, and better bar those. Now, favorite, Dream Searcher, a horse that uh, ran a very nice race last time out when a second behind uh, Lorena. She's uh, obviously coming along the right way. She's improving with each and every start, and with 53 and a half cages on the back, despite taking on boys, she could be a massive player. This was Le, Le, Le Legionnaire. I've, I followed him on a couple of occasions and uh, last time out he popped up and ran an improved race behind Aspect who we saw won a game race over the weekend to notch up his hat-trick. So this was on, on a mark of 79 despite 61 and a half cages on the back. There could certainly be quite a bit of improvement still to come. Yeah, this is a very, very trappy race, this race five. Uh, 
Well, the white at number seven in chanting choice goes in the fourth race. Of course, we can't do that when uh, preparing our bipods and our place accumulators, jackpots and pixies and so on. But uh, in chanting choice, ran third behind Lorena. And you mentioned that Dream Searcher was ahead of her second behind Lor Lorena last time out. I suspect that form is not that strong, but certainly number seven, Dream Searcher, is well weighted. But like you, I do have healthy respect for number four, Le Legionnaire. I think this is a very trappy contest. I don't really trust it. There are many with chances. My top choice uh, would be number four, Le Legionnaire, ahead of number seven, Dream Searcher. And then I'm looking for improvement from number two, Aberdeen. Uh, he's now had a couple of runs back after returning to the province from, from KwaZulu-Natal. Uh, they've always held him in quite high regard. He hasn't delivered, so he's definitely under-delivered thus far. He is starting to drop down the ratings from an 85. He's now down to a 77. That said, he's still got to carry 60 kilograms, but he's drawn in gate two. Craig Zaki gets a ride for the first time aboard number two, Aberdeen. So I'm going to throw him into the bipod along with numbers four, Le Legionnaire, and number seven, Dreams searcher but you can't completely rule out number one steadfast or number three majestic warrior or for that matter number five fair advantage uh, who may be the lurker in the pack here number five fair advantage and number nine norshan terrible run last time but if you judge him on his previous run he certainly got a chance so i'm hoping to get through the bipod with numbers two aberdeen four Le legion and seven dream searcher but i think from a jackpot and a pick six perspective you've got to go a little bit wider yeah, it's certainly got that feel about it where you could get a bit of a result in race number five in a race where you probably need to tread a really uh, the start off jackpot two. Moving along to race number six, this is a Cape Sea Stakes of the 2000 meter trip. 15.35 is the off time. And uh, Lucha Verde is the favorite at 28 to 10. It's uh, 33 to 10 about Fly Futura, 5 to 1 Summer Night City, twice the master at 6 to 1. And then it's eight to one and better ball those. Now I know you've got a value play in this race here. You'll tell us about that in a moment. But uh, this was uh, Lucha Verde. Last summer I thought he ran a very good race. I was in his camp. I, I thought he'd win that day, especially based on his last start, the way the, his penultimate start, the manner in which he finished off his race. But he found one too good. Lightning glow. They improve in lightning glow, and um, he. Him and uh, Fly Futura, they come with the same form, so there they shouldn't be a lot to choose between them. But um, take us through your value selection here, Graham. I'll get to the value selection in a moment, right here. Let's touch on those two you mentioned, Fly Futura and Luce Verde. I do think clearly they are the best two horses in the race, and uh, I don't think either are going to retire one time winners. Uh, Fly Futura, winner from only six starts, as you say, third behind Lightning Glow last time out, and Luce Verde, a winner from seven starts, was just marginally in front of Fly Futura last time. So, nothing to choose between Fly Futura and Luce Verde. Uh, last time was 1800, they step up to 2000 meters. Uh, they're young three year olds that are going the right way with plenty of scope for improvement. But the fact of the matter is that in a competitive race, they've both got 60 kilograms to shoulder. They're giving away seven kilograms to Summer Night City, whose recent form is pretty good, giving away even more weight to number seven, Eternal Optimist. There's not a hell of a lot to choose between Summer Night City and Eternal Optimist, uh, giving away six kilograms to Twice the Master, who was second behind Summer Night City last time out. But uh, Summer Night City should confirm that form at the weights. And then you mentioned my value bet, uh, number 11. And Caramel Fudge. It's been a long time since he won his maiden, 487 days ago. Uh, but his last uh, number of runs have not been too bad. He was only two lengths behind Summer Night City last time out. He's waited to get closer. And with just 52 and a half on his back in the Vaughan Marshall stable in good form, they had another double over the weekend. They also saddled twice the master here. I just think that at 12 to 1 and 14 to 1, Caramel Fudge offers good each way value. Certainly not with a great deal of confidence. There's not a lot to choose between Caramel Fudge, twice the master, Eternal Optimist, and Summer Night City, an all known collateral form coming into this race. So the question the question here is, can these two three-year-olds carry 60 kilograms uh, and give all of these uh, older hard-knocking rivals a beating? Of course they can, so it's a trappy race. I've gone pretty wide in the bipod. I've included numbers one, Fly for Tura, uh, three, Summer Night City, six, Luce Verde, and my value bet for the day, number 11, Caramel Fudge, hoping just to give myself a chance of perhaps getting a little bit of an upset in the last leg of the bipod. Uh, but no doubt about it. Fly Futura and Luce Verde, the two best horses in the race, uh, but the weights make it a lot more difficult for them. 
Will it be one and six or can number 11 Caramel Fudge uh, put up uh, his and, uh, and run a big race here at around uh, 12 to one in the market for uh, Graham? And Graham likes his chances here and hopefully that this foil son up because Solo can run a massive race despite that deep draw. Race number seven, 1400 meters uh, the distance, 10 past four is the off time. It's a class five Phillies and Mears contest where your favorite is number four, look forward at 33 to 10. Grandiosa is at 7 to 2. It's 4 to 1 Fly to Rio, 5 to 1 Veronique, Cloud Chaser, Your Eyes Only, and then it's 16 to 1 and Better Ball. Those. Now it's another race that uh, looks to be quite tricky for Phillies and Mares. You've got uh, Look Forward, who's um, a horse that uh, ran a nice race last time out. She was only beaten under length in a race that I think went to the boardroom because the second place horse uh, may have hung out or something onto a Look Forward stable companion. But uh, this horse on a mark of 56, she is surely going to be competitive. And then you've got a horse like number 7, Grandiosa, who was beaten behind Lorena. Now, we'll obviously have to wait and see how that form line works out if, uh, if the guys want to have a straight bet here. But in terms of the exotics, she's obviously a filly that needs to go into the play. Rahil, we said at the opening, at the start of the show, that uh, apart from Tanneron in the first, we've got a card full of uh, low-grade handicaps and open maidens, which makes it uh, very tricky, very challenging, uh, very exciting for some, because it's nice that the races are open and you could look for a bit of value here and there. Uh, this is another very trappy contest, 1,400 metres. I'll come back to the runners that you've mentioned, uh, but let me start off with number nine, Fly to Rio. Now, last time out at 14 to 1, I uh, can't remember if you did the show with me, but I made her the bet of the day and she duly obliged. So she rewarded us handsomely last time at a big price. So my question to myself is, I said, Self, uh, are you going to desert for Rio or are you going to stay with her because it's the same sort of feel? So again, she's uh, much shorter this time, obviously, at 9 to 2. Greg Enion had a good day. On Saturday at Hollywood Bet, Kenilworth, he's got Veronique and Fly to Rio. I think they're going to both be competitive. Uh, Fly to Rio, despite the poor draw, gets the vote from me ahead of its stable companion, number one, Veronique. Uh, but I wouldn't be surprised from pole position if Veronique was to turn the tables and Fly to Rio. But it's hard to desert a mare who, who rewarded you so well at a big price last time out. As you say, Grandiosa runs out of that Lorena form line. She was actually quite far back. And I'm surprised, actually. I might eat these words, but I'm surprised that Grandiosa, albeit a weak favourite, is at the top of the boards. I think she's got a bit more to find, but she has a scope on her side. She is well-bred, being by Silvano, and will still be maturing and improving. Now, you mentioned look forward. I don't quite know what to make of this filly uh, around the turn over 1,400 metres. I know she's been around the turn at Hollywood Bets Durbanville and uh, competed fairly well over the 1,200 metres. She does try the extra. She was over 1,400 metres a few runs back. Didn't run badly. She always seems to run the same kind of race. She never gets beaten too far and clearly is always a threat in this class of race. This is the lowest class you can get, class five. And uh, look forward, is still a maiden running in a handicap so there's no reason why she shouldn't be effective uh, despite not having won a race from 19 starts but it will be some kind of achievement from mike stewart having missed on 19 occasions to win with look forward not in a maiden but in a handicap but she will be competitive uh, number 10 your eyes only has an outside chance he wasn't too far behind fly to rio last time out so i'm gonna go with number nine fly to rio to beat a stable companion number one veronique i think greg Enion has a strong hand here but if it were to Happen the other way around, I wouldn't be surprised. Look forward, competitive, grandiosa, competitive, and yours eyes only also competitive in a traffic contest. Yeah, you could be right with Fly to Rio. She could certainly go back to back. I mean, she is the only four time winner in the race. You've only got another horse that's won two races, and that's the stable mate, Veronique. And she's in receipt of weight from a number of runners, including the maiden number three, United We Stand. So she could be a horse that. Uh, could be uh, hard to beat once again, number nine, Fly to Rio. And at four to one in the market, she's definitely a horse that uh, needs to go into every single play. That's in race number seven. Moving along to race number eight, the final race on the day. It's a class four over 1,200 meters. And uh, 16.45 is the off time. Having a look at the fixed odds betting market, your favorite is number eight, Speed Racer, albeit a weak favorite at nine to two. It's a 9-2 Winter Pearl, 5-1 Boogie Fight. He's found a touch of support from 6-1 to into 5-1. to one. Night Tiger at 5s. Cal Forest, 6-1. to one, And then it's 7-1 to one and better bar those. Now, uh, Speed Racer, 
he won um, a nice race uh, last time out, beating a pro shot. And um, he's a horse that he's obviously open to uh, scope for improvement. And now with that win under the belt, he's, his confidence could um, could be up, and he could certainly go uh, go on and kick on with his career. This horse boogie fight. No doubt he's been a bit disappointing. A son of Justify, he came to the track with a bit of a reputation. They fancied him on debut. He found Mo Capitano a bit too good. And then at the second time of asking, he got the job done. But he's not been a horse that has been able to kick on with his career. Maybe it's been his rating that has been the downfall. Maybe too high at a 90. Now on a mark of 82, he could pop up. And then you've got this horse, Dragonfly, who's, um, who's dropped significantly in the rating from a 91 down to a 75. And... Track and trip suits. He's another runner that could pop up, reverting back to the 1200. This is a very, very tough race. It's the toughest race on the card. By virtue of the fact that they're all competitive, the form of many of the runners coming into this race suggests they could win a race of this nature. Let's start with Speed Racer. That's where you kicked off. Uh, there's no doubt that uh, he took a long time to win his maiden. That's there for all to see. He won his maiden in his ninth start, but it was only his third start as a gelding, and I think gelding's done the trick for him because when you look back through his form, he's been placed behind some very nice horses. Underworld, getting impressed Lindbergh and as you say that second to Riverstone that was a, a very good second and has proven to be a very strong form line so there's no doubt that number eight speed racer is going the right way but this is going to be a real test for him and we'll see where we are with speed racer and while you've got to throw him in I'm going to sit on the fence and just see how he goes if he were to win I wouldn't be surprised because I think there's a lot of upside and a lot of improvement to come uh, but I do like number nine boogie fight I know that he's underachieved. He's dropping in the ratings, and uh, but I think there's more to come. He also was only gelded in, in December. This is his fourth start as a gelding. And again, we'll know where we are with Boogie Fight. This is the kind of race that if he's going to win his way through the divisions, then he should win a race of this nature. So number nine, Boogie Fight, at a decent price, uh, is my top choice. But there's so many with chances here, Rahil. You can't ignore number three, Kelp Forest. You can't ignore number four, Night Bomber, or number five, Night Tiger, or number six, Winter Pearl, who recorded back-to-back -back victories over 1,200 metres in October and November. And... Uh, while his last two runs have been below that, it wasn't disgraced behind Nordic Chief, and he was not too far away from War Chariot, and that form line is holding up quite nicely. Then you've got Moya Wala Liga, who flatters to deceive occasionally, but I think he's got some kind of ability. And you mentioned Dragonfly, who comes back to 1,200 metres. He's tried all kinds of distances as the five-year-old son of Water Winter, but he is a three-time winner, and uh, so he knows what it is to win. And as you say, his rating has now dropped to a very low mark of 75, and it wouldn't be a complete surprise if number 10, Dragonfly, was to win this. So it's a very, very tough end to a competitive day's racing. Uh, my each way play in the day is going to be number nine boogie fight in this race because I think there is more to come. Uh, but it's not going to be easy. There are many, many, many with winning chances here. Yeah, it's definitely a very, very trappy contest and the race in the pick six. Well, you need to go as wide as you possibly can. Uh, it's a field of 13 runners and let's see how it all unfolds we're going to move along to the suggested bet now and graham will take us through suggested bet to which is a bar pot and that commences with the running of uh, race number one at 12 40 over the 1000 meter trip and uh, graham take us through uh, your suggested bet my pot starts at 12 40 eight race cards so the first race first leg of the pie pot and uh, the obvious bank here is number six tanner on second leg numbers three four and eight that's moon acres aladdin's lamp and tom's diner the next leg numbers six eight and nine connery maneki neko and explosive speed but as we discussed if money does come for number two king's boy then add him to that list uh, then numbers four, seven, and nine, Hampstead Heath, Enchanting Choice and Philosophize. That's in the fourth leg. The first leg, numbers two, four, and seven, Aberdeen, Le Legionnaire, and Dream Searcher. If you want to add a few more there, because that race is quite trappy, I wouldn't uh, wouldn't put you off that. But two, four, and seven for me. And the last leg, numbers one, Fly Futura, three, Summer Night City, six, Luce Verde. And my value bet for the day goes in as well. That's number 11, Caramel Fudge. Is currently trading at around 12 to 1 for race 6.
That is uh, Graham's suggested bet. Barpot gets underway in race number one. Best bet on the card, uh, Tanner Run. Let's see if this filly can get the job done in the first race. Graham, thanks very much for your time. All the best. Have a wonderful weekend. Uh, looking forward to racing tomorrow. Thank you, Randil. Have a good week. Thanks very much to Graham Hawkins. All the best with racing art at Hollywood Bets Kilmouth on Tuesday.